So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first lunchtime keynote, which will kick off then a series of lightning talks that we have. So um, to kick things off, Das from Intel and Christos from Mesosphere. Thank you. Great. Hey, thank you, David. All right, how's it all going, folks? We have slides, I swear. Okay, so, uh, so Christos and I are gonna be talking a little bit about some work that we're doing. But uh, originally, when, uh, when we booked this, we were gonna have a comedian for you for lunch, but uh, there was concerns they would, tell, they'd they would tell terrible jokes. So instead, I will be telling jokes, and I'm not a comedian. But we, we, when we talked to them, we were gonna talk about toe shoes. Anybody wearing toe shoes today? With any dockers on? No toe shoes with dockers, okay. Um, and we're also gonna talk about you know, how tech parties are, are really, really cool. We have awesome concerts and stuff where everybody stands around. Anybody go to one of these cool tech parties before? Okay, great. But last night we did have a, a pretty cool tech party that we got to go to, a few of us, and uh, um, they had some, some nice little, little chips there. Um, so, but if we back up in time, uh, what I wanted to cover was just uh, a path of, of, of computing evolution. Um, how many of you uh, still use Abacus? Okay, so if you call an Abacus, it was really easy to use, you know, one-to-one -one relationship. It didn't really break very often. Operations was really, really simple, and it helped us with math. And if you ask that question in China, uh, they actually all still have Abacus. And if you fast forward to about 1940, uh, anybody around for the ENIAC? <laughs> no. Oh, hey, somebody back there. So a cool thing about this is it had 18,000 tubes, and if two died, the whole thing would go down. You know, imagine that if you're in a, in a Mesos environment, if you lost two slaves and, and everything broke. Uh, it probably took PhDs to actually run it, um, but it was the first uh, big start, at least in the United States, uh, for computing. And then there was a, you know, a couple things. This was my first computer. Uh, there was a couple things in between the ENIAC. Uh, everybody hopefully had one of those. In ENIAC, and then to what we got to, which is basically a modern data center. Uh, but this, actually kind of like the ENIAC, isn't that far different um, from each other. And the reason I say that is most uh, enterprise environments built today, if you lose a couple servers, you lose the entire application. Um, and most of the environments, uh, they're, they're actually running uh, the data center way too cold. Uh, they're not really optimized, and they haven't really pushed the envelope of what's required. So it's cool to have you all here you know, talking about actual distributed systems and where we're going next uh, with what we'd like to think of as, as the hyper-evolution of infrastructure technology where we're actually able to truly push the envelope. Um, so from an Intel perspective, uh, we have to cover every type of data center uh, from the very traditional infrastructure all the way to what we're doing uh, with hyperscale now. And, uh, and we do see this, this path where everybody eventually will move to hyperscale and if somebody actually needs a concept of, of give me a server, uh, they'll actually run it on top of something like Apache Mesos. Um, there's probably not a bunch of OpenStack fans out there, are there? A couple, OpenStack fans? Hey, there's two. Okay, thanks guys. Um, but you know, uh, that, that kind of concept's actually still needed for a while because people actually want the construct of give me a server, but you can actually run what we call cloud type A on top of Mesos, um, very similar to what Google is doing with Google Compute Engine uh, running on top of Borg. Um, and then where does this all go? There's, there's gotta be things next. Obviously, uh, there's one option. Uh, you know, there is other options, but this is our, our preferred one. We're all really happy, you know, hanging out in, uh, in a beautiful robotic family. So, uh, we don't just do technology uh, just for fun, even though it is, it is a, lot of, a lot of fun. Um, uh, Google said just recently, hey, we want to match Moore's law in regards to cost of infrastructure. Um, and this is important for a lot of people that run infrastructure. Um, I used to run uh, Intel's uh, grid computing environment, and we're always looking at, hey, how do we drive down the cost? Um, one of the key areas is basically uh, with, with utilization. Um, how do we take a, a gigantic infrastructure? Um, our environment was about 100,000 nodes, and so just a couple percentages of utilization uh, was a pretty massive savings. But how do we drive down uh, the cost of the infrastructure so that basically everybody can run it and have that level of sophistication? So what Christos is gonna be sharing with you is uh, what's going on, the work that we're doing between uh, a bunch of us in the community with oversubscription. All right, so I want to show you an early oversubscription demo that uh, a few smart people at Mesosphere and Italy have put together, uh, Nicholas, Joris, Connor, Bartek, and Simon. So the problem we're trying to solve is relatively simple. You launch an important service through Mesos. It allocates enough resources to handle the spike, the high load, the Black Friday, whatever you're dealing with. 
But for the most part, most of the days and definitely all of the nights, it's going to be sitting there underutilizing the resources. So you paid a lot of money to Indel to buy this nice course and you're not using them that well. So what are we doing about this? Instead of showing you slides, let me show you a video of the demo. I'll start, I'll start it. All right, so we're going to zoom in a single node, uh, in a single slave, uh, which is running Memcached, an important service. It's running at about uh, 2.5 million requests per second. This is about uh, what you can do in this machine with about 40 cores, but this is a 72 core machine. So you're using about half of the resources. So the first thing we do is we dynamically calculate how many resources are slack. What's the difference between what you allocated and you're actually using, and we launch extra tasks on top of these resources. So while you are not using your primary uh, service as hard, we launch other best effort tasks. Now, when you launch best effort tasks, you do increase utilization, but you have to be careful. You can reach a point when you're launching tasks that actually interfere with the primary application. So at this point, we launch something which is memory intensive enough to cause memcached to lose 25% of its performance. So you're penalizing the primary workload to try to recapture uh, these extra slack resources. Obviously, this is a bad idea. This is what will cause your operators to be sad. So the second thing that we introduced here is the QS controller, which is dynamically monitoring what happens to the important applications. And when it realizes that something bad happens to the performance, the request per second or the uh, instructions per cycle suffer, it does corrections. And in the first version, the corrections are simple. Just kill misbehaving best effort tasks. So in here, you can see that a few of the extra tasks that go as the double utilization were killed because we deemed that they interfere with the primary application. So after a while, the QS controller here is the point where the performance of the, orig of the original application, memcached, is exactly the same before and after, but you've raised utilization in this case by about 30% for free. So you're making new compute resources out of nowhere, essentially. That's it. Okay. And just to uh, close out, so, so that's some cool work that we're all doing together. Um, but probably everybody's already re rewritten all their apps or started their apps on cloud native. Um, we are doing a, a challenge for those that haven't yet. So if you have infrastructure software that's not built for cloud native, uh, we're running a, uh, basically a contest. Um, we're gonna hit you up for scale, resiliency, and performance. If you uh, take a quick picture, you'll know what that URL is. But it's $5,000 $5, uh, for the first prize. So uh, hey, thank you.